um, we are live. Okay. Hello, everyone. We'll get started in just about a minute. Hello and welcome to our latest Expert Connect series, The Digital Supply Chain Explained. Uh, my name is Iris Sager and I'm Vice President for Learning Initiatives for the Center for Global Enterprise. Uh, as we've, uh, this is the third session we're doing here and this is something new for us, a 15 minute webinar that we're conducting over the period of five weeks. This is the third, as I mentioned. Our aim is to share key management skills for successful digital supply chain transformation. Uh, and we like to think of this 15-minute uh, session as espresso for the mind, brief but packed with lots and lots of information. Uh, and that's thanks to uh, the leader of these sessions, and that's Vivek Galani, Manager of Research, Programs, and Analytics for the Digital Supply Chain Institute, which is also affiliated with the Center for Global Enterprise. Uh, we'll have, uh, we hope, a, a few uh, minutes for Q&A at the end of this uh, session. And if you have a question for Vivek, please just uh, post it in the Q&A feature on Zoom. Uh, and Vivek, you can take it away now. Thank you, Ira, for introduction. Um, welcome, uh, everyone. Good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Um, so for today's session, which is third session uh, in the series, uh, We'll quickly review the digital supply chain and the people aspect of it. Uh, we'll see the people side of the DSC. We'll talk about the DNC, uh, DSC talent model that we developed uh, earlier this year. And then we'll set the stage for coming weeks of Expert Connect. So those of you uh, who joined us last week, uh, we talked about the four um, areas um, um, of the digital supply chain, which is demand, people, technology, risk. And those of you, who are joining us for the first time. Um, over the last two sessions, we talked about digital supply chain and demand. So digital supply chain is a customer-centric platform model, which connects a, uh, a four aspect of the, uh, uh, digital supply chain, demand, people, technology, risk. And we came, the uh, Digital Supply Chain Institute came up with this idea of four buckets uh, by talking to 26 uh, different um, supply chain executives and leaders across the world. Uh, back in 2016, um, and um, I, I suggest everyone to read French Side Flip to get more details on the four buckets. And in, in, in these four buckets, uh, demand is all about uh, how to do uh, stim how to calculate the uh, stimulating demand and how to stimulate demand. People is focused on cultural and organizational shift right now in an organization, and uh, I think the pandemic has accelerated those changes right now because of the work from home situation in many of the organizations. Technology is a, a supportive tool um, um, in terms of digital supply chain transformation. And when you are trying to do a direct to consumer model and going online an e-commerce platform, uh, I think it enhances uh, uh, enhance your risk. And I think managing it uh, makes a really priority. So for today's session, we'll talk about the people aspect of it. So uh, Dell is, um, uh, let me talk about a quote from Dell for, for it. Um, so Andre Dell, so Andre Soldo from Dell um, is a member of the institute and also co-chair of the institute. And he mentioned um, in our latest white paper that digital workforce strategy designed to transform supply chain need to account for people, experience, skills, and not just systems and processes. So most of the companies we have talked, or we are talking right now, they're almost their main priority right now is technology, systems, and processes always. They do not focus on talent. They do say that talent gap is, is the main concern for them, but they do not have a talent strategy to work on it or to remove that um, gap. So I think our companies need to make sure that they focus on people, experience, and skills um, to make sure they, uh, they remove the gap 
um, to make sure they can transform uh, to, to a digital supply chain. And um, during that research, we did a couple of uh, surveys. So here are a couple of key insights uh, from the survey. So majority uh, of firms that we surveyed reported that there is a uh, uh, concern regarding the current um, talent pool that is inadequate for the executing the strategy of digital supply chain because they do not have the skills or the talent um, to go uh, to a data-driven um, decision-making model instead of just in intuition-based decision um, decision uh, decision making so i think uh, companies need to make sure that they train the current uh, people but also hire new talent or digital talent that actually are more focused on data driven decision making and they understand the data more than um, they understand anything else uh, the second they, they there is a lack of reported action to develop meaningful uh, digital talent strategy to close the gap as we talked about most of the companies don't have a digital uh, talent strategy Every company has digital demand plan strategy, but they don't have digital talent strategy. Uh, and talent brands, a meaningful way to attract digital talent must be developed and improved. And we'll talk more about that um, when we talk about the DSCI talent model. Also, firms now see the development of exist existing talent rather than acquisition as a primary way to close the skills gap. So most companies realize that even if you hire a digital talent, they are digital talent is lacking um, a functional expertise that they need to perform, they, they need to perform their uh, roles and responsibility or better understand the business. So I think it's always better if an individual uh, or an employee has both a digital talent, but also a functional expertise uh, or a domain expertise in that area. So what they are trying to do is trying to develop their current employees and make sure that, uh, that they train them uh, in a digital talent or digital skills. Uh, to make sure that they can use them um, at a higher benefit level. And majority uh, of companies do not have supply chain driven digital uh, talent strategy. So some of the companies we talked to, for example, J&J &J, um, or Colgate or, or other company, they do have digital talent strategy, but what they lack is supply chain input to those talent strategies. Because if you are using some of those talents for the supply chain, you need to make sure that you have some kind of inputs or requirements that you can put it um, into the digital talent strategy. And some companies are trying to do that when they hire a new member for the team, trying to put digital skills needed into the roles and responsibility to make sure that they have those um, uh, they have those skills when they hire a new one. So. By talking to so all all this company, um, we uh, found out some of the characteristic of the future talent. So uh, all 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 the supply chain executives that we talked to agree that the new hire should be curious, uh, and it should be always about continuing learning. So learning is not an overhead cost or a one-time thing. I think every day um, in your uh, in your job, a person has to be curious to learn and learn new stuff every day. Uh, and, and if you do that, you are just stagnant uh, at that level, and you won't be able to uh, you you won't be effective to the company uh, in implementing that strategy. Uh, and to do that, I think a person always has to have analytical skills, always needs to be flexible, and always needs to be data driven. And the last point that I mentioned is all uh, it's all about collaborative with a uh, with a purpose. So I think uh, when we talk to uh, companies, most of the companies have siloed. Uh, uh, siloed structure, so uh, different functions don't talk in between. And I think that's the uh, uh, main barrier uh, within the company uh, uh, when they try to uh, do any kind of transformation project. Uh, uh, and it, it, it doesn't go successful or it doesn't scale up when you do a proof of concept. So I think having those kind of skills really help a company uh, build, uh, build a better and scale up a technology or a process that can really uh, increase their revenue. So um, as we talked about talent, uh, uh, DSA talent model, we developed this earlier this year uh, with the help of Professor Dave Kerr. So there are three um, aspects uh, of the DSCI talent model. So the first one uh, is about attract and acquire. So um, when we talk about attract and uh, acquire, companies need to build um, a, a digital supply chain employment brand. I think companies need to pivot uh, that current employment brand uh, to data-driven employment plan, uh, develop competency centers in attractive location, and utilize non-traditional uh, recruitment um, to get new talent. 
uh, and so for and here is a good example uh, so wayfair is a good example for this one because uh, if you look at the data science community and they how they promote their employment uh, how they um, promote some of their employees which are data scientists or data analysts it really helps uh, helps them attract and acquire new talent and uh, and i think they are giving right now a really good competition to amazon in terms of the inventory turnover uh, because of they have a really good talent and they have a really good employment plan uh, to fulfill the uh, digital talent strategy the second aspect uh, is all about integrate and perform so how uh, and it's all about enable and drive digital strategies or digital uh, supply chain transformation strategies for that so how do you pair technologists with domain experts how do you develop an organization structure that supports exploration and not just do uh, uh, data cleaning um, or data analyzing and actually may train for integrator behavior and we'll talk about that model um, uh, in the next slide um, and the third part of the DSPI talent model is all about nurture a data-driven culture. So how to create a data science community uh, within your company that talks about different data exploration. So if you have an overall community from different function, and, uh, and so a data analyst from one function can talk to data analyst or data scientist from other function and talk about different kind of problems and solutions that company should be focused on and then start working on it to make it more impactful cross-functional and show commitment to digital community and also support external uh, contributor uh, uh, in that community as well. So as we talked about the integrated behavior, uh, here is one of the uh, way uh, companies can uh, companies are doing uh, uh, an organization structure where they start to put um, a team for data exploration. Um, I, and to be part of the team, I think um, it, it's not just data scientists can be part of it. It needs to have data scientists, data analysts, and domain experts. Um, and it's it, it's not a hierarchical structure. It's it's at the, um, it's a kind of a center of excellence, where uh, um, part of team member of the team um, are trying to uh, come up with a non-intuitive insight for by using the unstructured data pattern and finding um, driven by questions and hypotheses. And sometimes uh, team members are also trying to come up with the business problems that can be solved with the data. So not just finding a solution, but also finding a business problem that's not has been discovered by senior, senior leadership uh, within the company. So that's part of the data exploration because when we talk to company, most of the data scientists they hire, um, that 80% of time are spent on data cleansing. And that's not a really good use of resources within a company. So companies are now moving away from that structure and make sure they have two different aspects, which is functional analytics, where People can work on um, data cleansing and data analysis part of it uh, within that function, but then uh, that should be an essential part uh, of the data exploration where uh, people can go and explore uh, insights and data throughout the company, uh, and it needs to be cross-functional um, um, cross functional within the company. Um, so that's all we have. Um, uh, we have more details on each of the three buckets within the talent uh, talent, uh, talent model, and we have more examples, um, and what questions um, supply chain leaders should ask to make sure that they, they have a really good demand talent strategy, uh, de uh, st talent strategy that can um, um, implement and uh, stimulating demand, um, implement the new technologies, scale up a new technology, but also managing risk. Uh, and overall, um, overall, the goal for the digital supply chain is to reduce the cost, but also increase the revenue from the supply chain. So I encourage everyone to read the latest white paper, which is Talent and Organi Organizational Planning Guide, uh, which is available on DSA website. So I encourage everyone to do that. And if you have any questions, well, please feel free to reach out to us. And I'm happy to have uh, a detailed conversation regarding any of those questions. Um, so back to you, Ida. All right. Very good. Thank you, Vivek. Uh, one quick question before we let um, people go. Uh, I'm curious, as you put together a, a talent or as a company puts together a talent strategy, what is the advice um, for bringing in new talent, new people, new employees versus retraining existing employees um, and um, trying to get them to be more data savvy? 
So what, how do you strike that balance? Do you, do you strike that balance at all? What, do you, what is the recommendation? Um, so uh, uh, it's a great question, Ira, and I think it depends on the company's size um, uh, and the investment they have right now. So for a smaller company, it's always, if they don't have the talent in, uh, even internally, it's always go and get and uh, uh, attract and acquire talent. Uh, for, but for, uh, for big companies, uh, they can easily um, acquire a company to fill that gap immediately, but uh, most of those companies are trying to do right now is train the internal people uh, and trying to move them from intuition-based decision-making to uh, data-driven decision-making. Um, and one of the challenges I think they are facing right now, uh, because they don't want to hire a new talent in COVID era, especially because it's really hard for a new hire to collaborate with team members uh, on a Zoom because they don't know them at all at this point. Uh, in COVID and they are working from home. So it was uh, a track and acquire before COVID, but right now it's all, uh, um, all about training um, and it will change. Uh, um, it will change next year and it will change the year after that. So I think it's a continuous learning and continue, continuously improving the talent strategy. But most companies right now um, are training internally, um, and, uh, but then the focus on hiring afterwards, it's, that is a really, um, that is like lack of resources within the company, then they go, go to the second option of Patrick and acquire. All right. Very good. Well, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for thank joining you, us. And uh, we will see you uh, next week, same time. Thank you everyone. And we'll see you next week um, at the same time.